hi everyone thanks for opting our course in this video we are going to discuss about <coughs> introduction to mainframes differences between mainframe and windows how we can compare mainframe with windows this is very useful for the people who are new to mainframe technology differences between batch and online applications so what is a batch application in mainframe what is online application if different subsystems in mainframe there are different subsystems are there we are going to discuss about them and emulator what is emulator what is the need of emulator and emulator configuration so if you want to start doing hands-on first we need to do uh, we need to configure emulator so that we are going to discuss first let me explain what is mainframe okay so mainframe is a server some people will call as a system okay so in my words i can say mainframe is a server why we are calling as a server because we are connecting from different locations from different terminals so obviously that we call as a server if you take a example unix using putty we will be connecting to unix system in mainframe we are connecting to mainframe server from different locations that is the reason we are calling as a mainframe server and we can call as a system why we are calling again as a mainframe is a system team if you take a windows is a system linux system okay mac operating system so whenever we say the windows system or any system it has different components it has different components what are the components okay that we will see okay so by by comparing windows and mainframe we will try to understand why it why we are calling as a system yeah so team let's try to understand before we discuss about the mainframe as a system let's try to understand the differences between mainframes and windows so team most of them are aware of windows operate windows uh, system any laptop which has a windows operating system or mac operating system so windows versus mainframe okay so i we are talking about ibm mainframes so there are uh, csa ca company is computer associative now it is a broadcom so ca have a their i know their own mainframe computer so now we are discussing in our course about ibm mainframe okay the first point so the first point team operating system os in windows we use windows operating system so if it is a if you take a few laptops some of the laptops will be having windows operating system linux operating system as per the requirement we will be doing it so in case of mainframe we will be calling as a zos g series operating system zos operating system g series operating system so in windows we will be using windows operating system in mainframe we use zos operating system second point what is okay so in windows we have something called xp we have vista 2010 version 2007 version right so here we are having xp these are the versions of the operating system vista and so on similarly even in mainframe also in mainframe also in mainframe also we have something called multiple virtual storage mvs stands multiple virtual storage which is 
earlier is older operating system on mainframe system now the latest operating system is z series operating system again in each operating system there are versions are there we are not discussing about them i high in high level we can remember so mvs is the operating system zos is the g series operating system the latest operating system on mainframe we are using z series operating system then in windows in windows we will be having hard disk to store the data so how we can store the data in in any laptop so yeah so in we have a laptop in that windows operating system but if i want to store the data so we should have sdd external i mean hard disk hard disk or ss sdd something nowadays we are getting sdd something like this so we need okay storage device i can say hard disk in high level so in case of mainframe where the data is going to store so tape is the one storage device another one is dash d direct access storage device okay so direct access storage device so this is another uh, storage device so in mainframe there are two storage devices are there tape earlier uh, days okay mainframe was using tape to store the data but now efficient uh, storage device in mainframe is dash d direct access storage device next okay so we have something called speed okay in windows we call you know if you go to the taskbar you can see the speed of the applications and all right speed of the you know processor and all here we have something called mips okay the speed how we calculate speed in mainframe in mips we will be calculating speed of the mainframe system in mips million instruction per second so by this stands okay million instruction per second by this we can understand the speed of the mainframe system the next one here we can store the data in the form of notepad or we will be having a folders right so notepad or folders in mainframe so we have something called data sets so in windows operating system we will be having notepad or folder so in notepad we can store the data it can be character data it can be uh, alphanumeric data it can be numbers or any type of data n number of times same data you can write similarly in mainframe where we store the data in data set so there are different types of data sets are there that we will see in another video right so here we are calling as a data set next the sixth difference point i can say the so we have something called command prompt okay so we have something called command prompt so using command prompt we can create the files we can rename the file names we can copy we can move in case of mainframes we have something called tso time sharing option so tso stand time sharing option if you want to store the data okay sorry if you want to create the files nothing but if you want to create the data set or if you want to copy the data from one file to another file we can use tso commands so both places we need to remember the commands then we can able to achieve our requirement requirement here it can be creating the file copying or deleting so in this way we can compare windows and mainframe so by this time you would have understood so here we call as a windows system because we have a hard disk so we have a storage device okay we have a storage device we have a hard disk and operating system same thing even in mainframe also we have all the components 
that is the reason we are calling mainframe as a system okay so mainframe we are calling mainframe as a system hence you can you can configure all these softwares in one place and we can allow users to connect to mainframe system hence it will become mainframe server it will become mainframe server so this is all about mainframes and we have seen comparison between mainframes and windows operating system now we will try to discuss modules in mainframes okay so before we start discussing about batch and online application we will try to discuss about modules okay so if you want to develop uh, uh, before let me explain future sal sorting why uh, you know of future so i did not explain the, we have seen what is mainframe what is the mainframe system what why we need mainframe you know system there might be a question if you are new to mainframe so you will get a doubt why 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 mainframe so team uh, mainframes okay it is not a new technology it was developed before few decades back few decades back only mainframe was developed what is the object of the mainframe okay I mean why ibm introduced mainframe first okay what is the need of it right so as you know in banking sectors or uh, if you take uh, army data if you take a uh, uh, you know insurance data all are very very secure okay so uh, what are the things we are i'm telling one is banks customers data in banking domain in banking domain in banking sector customers data storing and maintaining them is very very important similarly army data okay so army data also we have to store the data securely and safely then if you take a insurance even insurance customer details also we have to store data safely and health health sector patient details also we need to store the data securely so not about only securing the data if i want to retrieve last 10 days data or if i want to retrieve last 10 months data it should able to return very fast to the end user so we need a application we need a system system which can handle huge amount of the data next point here as you know in every day if you take a bank application how many transactions will happen per second okay if you take a any x bank in usa or uk in every country there will be a top if you take a top three banks in every country so there will be a top bank companies will be doing more transactions right so if you take a bank of america if you take a rbs or any other <coughs> banks so there are so many transactions are happen every minute every second so we have to store the data faster safely and it can able to handle huge amount of the data if 1 lakh transactions are happening it is per second at the same time still it should able to handle okay so what type of the system it can support answer for all question is mainframe the features of the mainframe okay storage capacity you can store you can store huge amount of the data you can store huge amount of the data so in in the in our world in this particular world so maximum data where we will get either retail market or bank okay banks insurance nowadays e-commerce transactions right so if you want to store the huge amount of the data okay so without uh, creating a problem to the system or end user so mainframe can handle it so it is to uh, storage is the one of the mainframe feature it will allow you to store huge any amount of the data secure security of the data 
So in mainframe, storing the data is almost 200% is secure. Okay. So far in my experience, I did not heard that somebody is trying to hack the mainframe data. I did not heard. Even if they tried to do also, they did not. They could not able to do it. Okay. With minimal knowledge, I am trying to explain here okay, in terms of security. So if you see any web application security, if you see here and there, there is a every two years, one year we will hear that okay here you know this particular client data is hacked, this particular data is hacked, this website is hacked. We heard like that in so many places, in so many articles, newspapers, or channels. But in mainframe, you you know you would have not heard about it. So by these statements, we can understand how much is you know how much data is secure okay how you can you know how the mainframe is more secure by the statement you can understand security and performance okay so what is the another one performance as i said earlier so the calculation of the mainframe uh, server performance will be like you know billion instruction per second per second it will you know perform millions of transactions so if you want that much speed mainframe can do easily okay mainframe performance is very faster performance very faster and it is faster and performance wise also very good okay it is a reliable okay it is a reliable and resilience reliable and resilience what does mean team so you try to do so many transactions every day by daily basis or on you know you it, in, a, in a second you do n number of transactions but mainframe can handle it mainframe can handle it. if somewhere if something happens in the application to take any application you take a mainframe system or you take any other technologies other any storage platforms here and there you will get a some problems right here and there you will get the problem but once the problem is solved whether the whatever the data earlier is there it is safe or not okay means if something goes wrong what about existing data is it safely is there or not plus data is corrupted or not and data is erased or not so these are all the question marks right so for all these question marks mainframe can give easily answer something goes wrong also don't worry about data data will be there data will not last and from where it got struck from there it will restart so you don't need to start from the again scratch so that is the another feature of the mainframe so why clients are preferring mainframe because of these features mainframe is providing all these features then whoever wants these parameters functionalities client are looking mainframe so storage security performance it has a reliable system and resilient. These are all the features of mainframe system. So the next question. So yes, you said everything fine, but who are going to use it? That might be your question, right? So almost all top banks in the world are using mainframes. Okay, all top banks, all top ten. Okay, so here and there they are using the mainframe to store. According to my minimal knowledge again here, okay. So Bank of America, Royal Bank of Scotland, banking companies, right? So there are insurance companies. City, uh, there is a bank called Citibank. There are few insurance companies are using mainframes. Retail companies like Tesco and Walmart, even these clients are also storing their data in mainframe. Okay, so. Just I have taken one a few two examples with my minimal knowledge, but there are so many other banks, insurance companies, retail companies, uh, you know, uh, manufacturing companies are using mainframe. So mainframe is not only specific to uh, banks are not specific to insurance. Okay, so we can, I mean, any sector, any domain, organizations can use mainframe. To store the data, but okay. So mo most other you know banks or insurance companies or health and 
okay so this major three sectors people are going to use main right? one is banks insurance companies right so uh, banks insurance and health sector organizations are going to use mainframe to store the data and safely and faster way so this is all about mainframes and differences between mainframe and windows now i will explain now i will explain so what are the modules okay you said everything is fine what is main you said it is a faster storage is fine performance is fine it is reliable resilience and okay so we are going to use it right so now i know all of them what next right so what are the things will be there okay so i am talking about the operating system level but as a developer what will be there what i should learn in main right so mainframe modules so what are the modules will be there in mainframe or what are the courses you can say so mainframe modules first module tso ispf so this is the first module in mainframe technology okay being you are in a support role whether you are a db2 dba or whether you are a developer whether you are a mainframe tester whether you are a mainframe kicks admin whether you are a mainframe uh, jetways admin so irrespective of the role what you are doing in mainframe you should know about ts or ispf why because so this is the first module in mainframe technology by this module only you will come to know how to connect to mainframe how you can navigate the screens what are the commands are there okay how to create a file how to delete the file navigation part how you log out all of them we are going to discuss in this particular module so this is the first module in mainframe so once you are familiar tsy spf module yes you are good to start with the another module as per the role you may have to choose the module so for everyone jcl may not be required but i can say who are working on mainframe but most of the major roles for all of them it is required jcl okay so jcl is also common for everyone should know as a common we should know about jcl also so jcl is a job control language jcl stands job control language job control language so with the help of jcl we can compile the programs we can run the program and we can create the files we can copy the data we can delete the file we can delete the content so we can do all the operations using jcl okay so this is also very important module so i can say team without jcl there is no mainframe project hence you can understand the importance of the jc the third one third module in mainframe visa so this is optional it is not required for everyone who are working on mainframe so if you are mainframe developer if you are working as a mainframe te uh, tester or main in mainframe support so then you should know visa at least introduction so visa is a storage method it is a storage so where you store the storage storage uh, method okay so or let me write virtual so virtual storage access method so in vizam we can store the data what is the which is equivalent to database type, but database means we have a relational database hierarchical database network database model so don't compare those three with visa because you can say visa is something notepad or you know excel one tab so it is to store the data automatically visa will come up with the jetways operating system by default so that is high level about visa next one cobol programming language so in any technology you need a programming language right if you take a java you will be using we will be using for java 
if you are talking about dartnet we will be using c sharp right so in mainframe we will be using cobol to develop the application if you want to develop the application we will be using cobol is the cobol is the only one language used to develop the application no not at all so we have pl1 is the another programming language okay so we have a okay cobol in some clients will use cobol some in some project they will use pl1 in a single project they will be using cobol and pl1 it's totally depends on the client and the project okay but most of the people are aware of the cobol should know about the cobol pl1 again here i can say it is optional okay so if you are looking if you are looking for mainframe developer content or you are going to act as a mainframe developer in future we should know minimum cobol okay because most of the projects will use cobol next we have something called db2 so cobol is equivalent to core java db2 is equivalent to oracle okay if you take a .NET sql server so db2 is a relational database data base 2 it is a ibm product okay it is a ibm product the database db2 is the ibm product so it is a relational database to store the data any type of the data next we have something called cics in mainframes if you want to develop front end application we need cics if you want to develop front end application we need cics module on top of it these are all minimum you should know team so again uh, we will be discussing so after some time we will be discussing differences between batch and an online application there i'll explain uh, what are the modules are you should know minimal what are the things you can keep as a optional okay so at this moment cacs is a front end so i have listed only 17 sorry six so there is something called assembler uh, rex okay rex is to create a automation tools on mainframes that is also very important rex assembler assembler like that there are so many other modules also there in mainframe so using all these modules you can develop a bank application or any insurance application or you can process any other domain application okay. so these are all the modules are there which are frequently predominantly will be used these are all the modules will be used in most of the projects so this is all about okay mainframe module now we have seen so far what is mainframes comparison between mainframes and windows and now we are going to discuss differences between patch and online application so in mainframe there are two applications are there team. there are two projects there are two types of projects so here when whenever i say application you please consider as a project only so here there are two type of the projects so clients our company will choose for uh, and company will choose mainframe so for batch application for batch implementation or online implementation are both of them what this actually what these two are talking about right online application first what is batch application okay so any project any program or any application okay without having user interaction that application is called batch application so in another way i can say if any application doesn't have user intervention that is called batch application okay so without any human intervention there will be a program there will be a project those projects called as a batch application so user intervention so what is the point here user user interaction user interaction in batch application there will not be no there will not be a, uh, no there will not be a no, no interaction uh, user interaction no interaction so is it 
we have a user interaction no so in case of online application uh, in, in in case of online application yes okay so we have interaction okay so user is going to interact directly with the application so we'll see the examples don't worry about it now what is example so you're talking about user interaction so for batch application team so for batch uh, application example case slips bank statement bank statement or credit card statement and so on any pay slips reports bank statement any valid statement all the things will come under batch application so to get the bank statement are we doing anything on monthly basis no right so you are going to the bank you are going to do some transaction you no need to worry about what is the bank statement and you might be doing online banking there also whatever the transaction you want to do you will be doing it either transferring the money or paying the bills you might be doing something in the online application but to get the bank statement we don't do anything okay so in the back end in bank application in the back end what the bankers will do organization will do so whatever the transactions got stored so your transactions will be stored somewhere so there will be an application there will be a program will read the transaction details from file or database according to the transactions either credit transaction or debit transaction based on the transaction customer numbers customer ids customer names based on all these details it is going to process the transactions and it gives you the at the end it gives you the statement okay so to get the bank statement there will be application program so application program will read the data from where from your transactions where the transaction got stored from there it will read the application program application program will generate the statement it gives to you it will send it to mail so this is example so pay slips if you are an employee of an organization you are going to get the pay slip monthly basis okay uh, you know starting of the month or uh, first week of the month right so you will be getting the pay slip so there also we don't do anything so that is the reason i said there is no user interaction to get outputs but here in case of in case of online application yes okay so if you do uh, you are doing a net banking so net banking or online reservation so if you take a uh, online reservation online reservation net banking and so on that is called online application so mainframe supports batch application at the same time online application then who will give the data so there is an application program batch application program who will give without uh, you know input to the batch application who will give the data to online application right so for batch application okay for a batch application the data is going to come through files or data or database i was telling you rightly so there is a batch application program it will read the data from files or database based on the transaction type it will generate the statement so means the data is given okay is providing by files or database to the batch application program so when it comes to online application end user end user will give so once you give the uh, input based on your input output will come the another screen will come that is the reason i'm saying end user end user will give the data so what about the output okay so you will get the output as per the schedule 
okay as per the schedule you will get in the batch application what does mean team so are you getting bank statement whenever you want yes nowadays banks are providing but if you see uh, you know bank statement something you will get every month pay slip will you get when you want no right you will get starting of the month right so there are a you know statements irrespective of whether you request or not you will get monthly okay so that is called as per the schedule you are going to get the output so batch application program is going to give the output as per the schedule but in case of online application we will get immediate output we will get the immediate output so once user enters the data once user logins once user uh, enter the credentials click on login you will get another window to do some other transaction to do something else so you will get the immediate output the next one so in order to, to develop batch application what are the modules are required what are the modules are required so as i said tso ispf is the common module for everyone so we need a jcl so either vizam or db2 or both of them then cobol or any other programming language so that is in batch application here vizam db2 vizam or db2 to store the data in a backend we will be using cobol and to develop the front end screens we will be using cics so jcl is here but here it is not there because in order to run the batch application i need at any cost jcl in online application in order to run the program i no need jcl but if i want to compile the online application program again it is required so i have listed in the based on the execution you know running so if i want to run the batch application i need jcl without jcl i cannot run but in case of online application i no need the run jcl or jcl to run the online application program so these are all the modules you can understand earlier i listed right what are the modules where we use it. so coming about the percentage of the project okay let's take a so 100 100 clients are there let's say there are 100 clients on the mainframe so out of 100 80 percent of the users or clients will come to mainframe for batch application so why they choose 80 i can say it's my my own value slip it is not a statistics of from any official organization based on my experience i am listing okay don't go with these numbers you know trainer said this is 80 always it is 8 it is with my minimal knowledge right so i'll say 60 to uh, 70 percent of the projects our clients will choose mainframe for batch application not for the front end so rest of the 30 percent means so 30 percent of the users they might come for online application if they are coming for online 100 percent most of the cases they will come they will choose batch applic back back end batch only to store the data so here i'll explain i'll elaborate a little bit more for why the clients are coming to mainframe only for batch application why they are not coming for online application as you know team so online application mainframe online application is a not a user friendly screens it is not a user friendly web page applications so what they do clients they will use java other technology to for the end users okay so whatever the data users are en entering that will come through some middleware tools to the mainframe and it will store in the batch okay so why they are coming to mainframe for batch batch applications only because CACS is not user friendly screens, okay, as per my knowledge and blocks, okay, because it's a black and white screen, so most of the end users will not happy with the, them, okay. Nowadays, there are so many 
frameworks front end frameworks are there will make user work you know easy right it will make user you know end users life easy so that is the reason clients will choose other technology to take the data then to store the data again they will come for batch operation so these are all the differences between batch application and online application next we will be discussing different subsystem in mainframe there are different subsystems are there so what is subsystem okay so there will be a question what is subsystem subsystem is a special or specific software which we we'll, which we install in jetbos operating system for specific functionality again i am repeating subsystem is a special software which we install in jetbos operating system for specific functionality and the specific software is going to control by again jetbos operating system only so let me give you the examples so by default i'll try to give the examples for subsystem team by default in mainframes sorry in windows we will get specific software okay if i want oracle if i want to oracle will i get in windows no if i want to use sap will i get no right if i want vlc player vlc media player will i get no right so by default windows operating system will provide some software similarly by default mac operating system will provide some operating some features they will not provide everything right in main frames also you will not get everything in a ready made so whatever i said here all of them may not come okay so when you install jetbos you will get some components some features some options but you will not get the some component like dv2 and cacs okay ims ims then information management system it is another data, hierarchical database ims db so i guess vtam also right like this tso and jes so these are all the sub system okay so these are all not come up with the jetbos system okay so you know these are all the sub you know if i want to use db2 automatically it not come up with the jetbos operating system so you need to procure it it is a commercial version again so we need to take a license from ibm and we can use it similarly kix similarly ims db all these are sub system okay so if i want db2 feature if i want to store the data as a client i want to store the data in db2 not in visa okay that is my requirement because there are more features are there i felt i felt right so in that case i have to take a license i have to procure it then i can i have to buy the license then i can use it similarly cacs ims db okay ims db again it is hierarchical database in mainframe okay mainframe it supports relational database hierarchical database and network database all are all these three models is supported by mainframe so vtap stands virtual telecommunication access method it is again another sub system tso time sharing jes job entry sub system jes stands job entry sub system so jes sub system is responsible for executing the programs executing the programs what user is written okay that is the responsibility by we you know taken care by the jes so there are few more sub systems are there but these are all very important sub systems in mainframe this is all about sub system so now i am reiterating the definition it is a special software we install in jetbos operating system for user specific requirement as per the user specific requirement so even though you install in jetbos operating system but the operating system uh, you know sorry this particular uh, software's execution or process will be controlled by 
Jetbus operating system only. So that is all about sub system. So I hope by this time you would have got an idea. Now how we can start doing hands and how we can make our hands dirty. Right? So for that there is a concept called emulator. So team emulator is similar to putting. Okay. So if you are from if you are from uh, Unix background, there will be a putty to connect the Unix server, right? So if I want to connect to mainframe server, if I want to connect to mainframe server, which is located somewhere in the world, then we need to install in our local system emulator. So we need to install lock in local system emulator. So there are commercial emulators are there. There are open source emulators are there so i'll be showing one commercial emulator so if you want to do hands up yes okay so you can let me know so you are good to reach out to me i'll be giving uh, the details okay so or i will be adding this particular one document in this video under this particular video category i will upload it how to configure mainframe emula emulator okay so what is emulator again i'm repeating emulator is a software which we install in local pc to connect to the mainframe server okay so there are so many softwares right now how we can do a configuration so this is the one document i prepared it so i will be adding this one so please Download the trial version emulator from this particular link. Okay, so you can download. So they will give 30 days trial version. So after that, if you want to continue this particular emulator, yes, you can buy it. You can take a license, or you can find for open source emulator. Just you have to Google it. Open source mainframe emulators. You will get options. You can try and explore them. So I'm giving demo on this Mocha app. So because I'll be using this one. So once you download, the installation is very easy. So if you are using Mac operating system, the relevant uh, icon will be there to download for Mac. If you want to download for Windows, yes, there is option. For both of them, it is there. For Linux, I have to see, right? So what? Once you install it, click on Windows button. So if you click on Windows button, you will able to see Mocha TN D270. Okay, you will be able to see Mocha TN3270. So there is no, uh, you might get a question. So uh, you you did not explain about the installation process. It is very pretty simple team. Download, install, next, 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 next. That's all. Don't do any changes, any option. Okay, there are three, four times you will get next, next, next option. Once you click on three or four times, next, 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 automatically it will be installed. Don't do any changes don't try to change the options during installation okay so once you click on windows button okay once the installation is com completed you click on windows button you will get mocha the mocha tn3270 option so or you can search it up to you so then so i am taking a screenshot of the continue time so if you are using within 30 days uh, it will ask you continue trial okay so click on continue trial after 30 days you have to take a license okay continue trial click on continue trial then once you open the emulator okay once you open the emulator so on the below screen you will you have to click on file menu bar so i am trying to show practically yeah so it is trying to open so it is opening can you see click on continue trial so once you click on continue trial so you'll be able to see options the options will be enabled you're able to process file edit view tools okay so we have to click on file in emulator click on file edit or new session so there is an option edit or new session once you click on 
edit our new session it will ask you you will get this window you have to provide the name anything as your as per your requirement you can provide you give you can give your any name give proper technical name so enter the mainframe against the mainframe ip address so you have to enter the mainframe ip address here and mention the port number so you can mention port number so what is important here so uh, as you know team okay since you are new i am assuming that you are new to mainframe so if i want to do some hands on tactically okay on mainframe server so we have to take a license okay you have to take uh, it for either rent we have to take generally few companies are there who will give you know mainframe id on re monthly rent basis okay so you can take per rent and you can use per one month or two months or three months so from which country you are taking depends on that cost will vary okay so i'm not going to discuss about the cost here right but so without ip address port number you cannot able to do it so already i have taken mainframe id per rent i'm going to do hands on on that so that is for your information then and again one more point uh, mainframe id if i let's take an example i have taken mainframe id for rent i already logged it so if other user is trying to log in from different place at the same time it will not allow at a time only one user can do hands on can practice it if okay with, if the same user and the other user is trying to do at the same time it will not so you can use same id in on different pcs not a problem but simultaneously after one by one okay or you do today now tomorrow you can do in another laptop no problem okay next port number will vary team so here 23 623 depends on the server so they will provide you okay so once you get the mainframe ip and port number so you have to click on connect or apply and connect so apply and connect will be able to see so once you do it you will be able to see it like this okay so now you can see some message right so you connected to one particular server okay. so here i have taken another server screenshot so once you click on apply icon it will connect to uh, you know mainframe server you can see the particular mainframe server main page once you connect to the server the process will remain the same team respect of to which server you are connecting so again it varies okay so some clients if you're working in one company they will give one emulator the login process is different so you have to take help from your seniors in that project who are uh, before you who have joined who are working you can take help from them and you can do it the configuration okay so i'll be attaching this pdf document in the uh, you know under this particular video category you can look you can found you can find and download you can give a trial okay team. so this is all about okay these are all the things about uh, about emulator configurations so as a conclusion for this video so we had a discussion on mainframe so differences between mainframes and windows and differences between batch and online application what are the subsystems are there and why the subsystems are required emulator what is emulator how we can do emulator configuration we have seen all of them in this video in our next video we are going to discuss about how to connect to mainframe server how do you log out so thank you teams thank you all